I'm going to give you an overview of my whole house standby water system. Then I'll go into the details of each of the components later on in the video. So I collect city water in two totes. This water is available for a complete replacement of city water. I just go to the sections with the pipes and valves, shut off city water, open the valve to activate the totes. It's got a separate pump and a pressure tank, just like you would have on a well, which lets the whole house run as if nothing was different than city water. To replenish the totes, should I use more water than the 550 gallons there, I have a rainwater harvesting system that uh, I can replenish the water in the totes. This is located underneath my deck. And you can see I collect the water from the roof directly above that. Uh, this system is 1,100 gallons, and it uh, goes through a series of uh, screens, filters, and uh, including ultraviolet. So this then becomes potable water. The only issue is the pH of rain here is 4.7, not compatible with copper pipe. So you cannot run this as a regular way of providing water. It's only standby. You can run it for probably a year or so before you start experiencing uh, leaks in your copper pipes. To replenish the water in the tote, there's a submersible uh, pump made by Water Rebirth and uh, has a suction hose with a uh, float and uh, a 1200 micron screen on it. This is made by WISY. Uh, all the screens in the system are about 1,000 microns, but the real filtering happens uh, later on in the system. So this system will uh, pump at about uh, four gallons a minute, which is uh, just enough to replenish the tow. It takes about an hour to fill it up. In normal operation, city water comes in, runs through an ice spring, uh, 5 micron, sedimented 5 micron uh, carbon filter. And if you want to fill up the totes or bring water from the totes, it goes uh, in that PEX line coming in from the right, uh, depending on whether the pump is running or not. It goes to that little T there. The line coming in from the left is the line from the rainwater replenishment system. A little close-up of those two setups. Now we're to the totes. The PEX line comes in from the city. It fills the bottom of the totes. And uh, to keep any microbial growth or anything forming, I blasted some CO2 in the bottom of the totes through that valve opening. And then I replenished the cam locks and filled up the totes. Vented from both totes. They have a common vent system so that you have to open that, of course, when you fill it or discharge. Check valve going to the pump. That's a shallow well pump uh, with a pressure tank. And that, uh, turn on that pump, activates the system when the valves are in the right position, of course. And then the water goes through the PEX line back to the house. Now, this is the rainwater system. This is the foundation made out of six by six pressure treated. Cut at a 45 degree angle, make an octagon. Here's the 1,100-gallon uh, uh, Norwesco tank. It uh, barely would fit through that opening. Had one inch to spare, so I had to keep it horizontal. Slid it in there on that base, filled with uh, a half ton of gravel. That's where you see where it lives underneath the deck. Um, there it is now plumbed up, ready to go, with the piping coming in from uh, two um, downspouts, or two gutters. Leaf filter, three inch on the left, two inch on the right. Uh, clear pipe for a sight glass. Goes to this four by four by three by three double Y. And uh, there's, uh, you can drain it on the, on the bottom there and the overflow goes down to the regular overflow from where the gutter was. There's the uh, Norwesco filter basket that sits inside the tote. We placed uh, easy on gutter guards on the gutters that uh, we're collecting rainwater from. Using uh, Google Earth, we calculated we have about 700 square feet of roof. 
That's a flat roof multiplied by 1.4 because of the 12 and 12 pitch. And you get, that gives us about 600 gallons of, of water per inch of rain here in Georgia. So it comes down, uh, uh, here's the uh, video uh, of the tank and, uh, all set up. Again, we have a leaf uh, eater on both sides, three inch pipe coming in to the top of the tank, uh, two inch coming from the other gutter system uh, with its own leaf eater. And uh, then the overflow is uh, on the top is a three inch, comes do this four by four by three by three Y. And the, uh, uh, the overflow has to be four inches Here's the mozzie stapa, keeps out the mosquitoes, rodents, and anything else that might want to come backwards up through that drain pipe. And the drain pipe just goes down through the normal, uh, you know, downspout through the uh, line going out to the out to the yard. This clear um, PVC uh, section is a two-inch pipe. It lets you have a nice sight glass. Also sees the condition of the water. You drain the bottom of the tank and see you know, if there's anything in there. And uh, there's little markings on the um, PVC clear so you get the, you know, works as a side glass. And again, the two inch and the three inch combining into that Y. Uh, the four inch is a larger diameter than the two and three combined. So that keeps you from uh, having any overflow from the tank that you want to avoid. A little mozzie stopper you see, a little gray thing on the top. That's the uh, breaker, so you don't create a suction, a siphon effect when it goes to overflow. Here's the electrical line with a little drip loop in it going uh, into the house, uh, the PET, the, the PEX rather, uh, output from the pump, and um, goes into the uh, filters. That's, uh, again, it goes to a spin down filter, a uh, sediment filter, five micron to five micron, uh, activated carbon filter, and then it goes up to the UV filter, which uh, then makes it potable, and then the water can come back uh, to that uh, T that you saw, and it can uh, be pumped over to the boats to refill them.